Hey guys, ICC Cup Fitz here, and I hope you guys enjoyed the last cast. And again, it's going to be from the same series. It's going to be TAC or Team All Kill Kings versus Team 3 in uh, Season 2 of uh, Week 3. So this should be pretty interesting stuff. Spawning as the bot in the bottom left as the Blue Terran is going to be Arya, or, or Walks Arya. I think that's supposed to be Arya. And spawning in the top right as the Red Terran, the awesome Red Terran Lightning. Um, I'm just going to go that I like Lightning's name more than Arya, but that's okay. And something about talking, which I wasn't really paying attention to as I'm looking at my show notes right now. So, anyway, Lightning, which I'm going to say I'm going to want him to win because I like his name. And it's from Final Fantasy Thirteen, and that chick was awesome. But beside the point... He is going to be, he or she, because there also are, like, pro top, there are, uh, there are, uh, players that are girls, like Toss Girl, for example. I saw, I saw an interview on the, on Team Liquid the other day about that. But anyway, uh, he's going to be averaging 128 this game and going to be maxing at 178. So not the highest APM I've seen, but it's, you know, it's not bad for D, for D rank. But anyway, spawning in the, and then, uh, saying it, and then Arya is averaging 109 and uh, maxing at 191. So he. Uh, he is going to be, or he or she, or Arya, I should say, Arya is going to be ma be able to max higher than uh, Lightning. We'll see if that really plays a difference in that. If you like to compare and contrast the APMs, and it makes a di big difference. Also, so, I have to say so much about this game. The map is Jade, which is kind of an inside-out fighting spirit. Uh, and I'm kind of sick of these maps at this point. But that's okay, because I cast so many games and watch so many. Hey, it's alright. So, anyway... Uh, most players, uh, it will be a TBT, by the way. Uh, most players, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I have so many thoughts in my head right now. So it's an inside-out fighting spirit because your main is still huge, but your main is on the low ground and your natural is actually on the higher ground. Now what makes this different, this map a little different is that there's a huge ramp that's kind of hard to wall off. Most people will just kind of put their main army here. The, and their third isn't on the high ground either. Uh, but this will be cross position, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised for both players to take their thirds over here, like Fighting Spirit, or sometimes they would take their their third over here, or etc. So we'll have to see that. The other thing is to note is I have seen in Jade people tend to go uh, fast expand more. Uh, also, for a couple of reasons, number one, this map is huge. The rush distance is pretty pretty long. And uh, the reason for another reason is that you don't want like tanks or kind of siege units outside of your ramp because then you can't see up it and they'll be shooting and then you have a less probability of actually hitting them. So we'll have to see how a TVT evolves. I don't really see a lot of mirror matchups um, just because I'm more influenced on the pro or the higher league level side of most Brood War uh, and there aren't as many mirror matchups uh, as I have. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of. I, I see through the eyes of Hashim, who thinks of what are what good games are, and most of those games are not mere matchups. What he thinks, I, I could I could have a completely different taste. I really don't know. I don't have a preference really. But uh, yeah, so we'll be seeing uh, two different builds from both Terrans right now. This Terran is gonna be going for more of a factory fast one, which I believe when I play Terran, he's gonna be doing some like kind of factory play with Spider Mines and trying to do some more harass. We'll see if uh, Lightning can hold it off. Most times, I think that'd probably be negated by like a bunker right here, and there's really nothing they can do about it. Uh, as there'll be four Marines shooting uh, all at once. So, but he will be doing what uh, I guess a one factory fast expand. Otherwise, I really can't tell you much. Uh, I let I don't like to you know try to guess do a guessing game for the entire entire like first ten minutes of the game. I, like to, I tend to just talk more. About just random stuff. So, about random stuff anyway. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, I believe, I'm not sure if these maps, this is going to be version 1.0. I know ICC Cup released a new map pool uh, just recently, like yesterday or two days ago. I forget when he, when, uh, what's his name? I forget what, I forget what, uh, Flash, no, his name is Flash. Whatever, one of my admin bosses guys kind of posted something on it. I, you can you can probably go look on the, on the thing and see uh, how much uh, who posted it. Uh, but beside the point, uh, we'll probably be seeing mech on mech play. You don't I don't believe you see bio too much in TVT. 
Uh, and he's going to do an early push with a couple tanks. And he didn't even go... Did he get Siege? Or he's going Siege first before... Uh, so we'll see if this does a lot of economic damage. Could potentially end the game right here if he's not really uh, expecting this push. I know for me, I'd be like, okay, great. He has a Siege shake. GG. <laughs> uh, it's interesting to note, though, he doesn't really have much to deal with it either. He'll have Vulture Speed, which is interesting. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to see, because uh, Siege Mode will be done. So it should be fairly difficult for him to deal with the Siege Tank. Uh, but it depends if he can get in there and do... Uh, Damage to the tank, though. Uh, it looks like he's going to be doing some damage, but not too, too much. We have to pull in SCVs off the line. This could be pretty epic. Will he be able to get us around? Looks like he will, and this tank will fall eventually. And uh, But he still has a couple of Marines and uh, Vultures here, trying to do as much uh, Vulture Micro as he possibly can. And he only has one Vulture to deal with this. Uh, he may want to just put that on repair. Uh, will it fall? It will, and he'll have, uh, oops, I was having another tank on the way. Uh, you know, I don't really know how much damage that really necessarily did. He kind of lost, he may have killed off one or two SCV. That was kind of cool. Ooh, we almost lost a tank there. That could have been pretty bad. Uh, I mean, he, he did, he saw he had an expand. But it wasn't to the point where it's like, okay, he just sieged the whole mineral line, and yeah. So I'm not sure if that's the most cost-effective push, and he's even going to be more aggressive on top of this, which I don't agree with. But beside the point, we'll have to see what that what that engagement does. He, on the other hand, is getting down to second factory just because he's actually getting starport, so he might be going uh, race, which he is. And... Uh, doesn't really have much to deal with that as his bio is gone. Uh, you know, could be doing a lot of damage, uh, but he will have two siege tanks of his own, and siege tanks tend to do pretty good damage. He doesn't want to run a lot of spider mine though, as he could lose that. It looks like he's just going to be pushing out with his own forces right now. Uh, will an eBay go down in response to this? Uh, he doesn't look like it is. He'll have a fairly early armory, but. Uh, there goes the academy down. He still has no... There come the Goliath. Okay. Which is shut down this push. Unless he's going cloak, which he's not. He's not going to invest that much into this cloak, into cloaked wreath play. I'm not sure if you... I don't think I've ever seen a game where it would, people mainly with that either. Um, it tends to be a lot of games I have seen in Brood War, though. Unlike this game, where there has where there's been, I mean, early game aggression. Like, it seems to me that a lot of... Brood War games I have seen. Now, again, I don't look through all the replays. Hashim does it for me. But a lot of players like to macro to a 200-200 army and then push. Like, where it's kind of more of a macro style oriented versus where I'm kind of more oriented from the pro scene of StarCraft 2 as well. I I, I, I don't cast StarCraft 2, but I follow it. Uh, not as much as I should, but I probably should watch it a little bit more than I do. But anyway, I'll, I'll watch IPL every, night, every now and then. But beside the point, what I was just saying is pros, I mean, maybe they just do it to make it more entertaining, but they do a lot more harassing, and they kind of go more different style builds, uh, which is kind of a different from Brood War, where the game is so old, not saying it's bad, it's just so old that there really hasn't, they're really not going to be that many, people go with their most familiar build, um, like, there's like 10 different ways to open as Terran. Terran normally go, either goes mech or bio on this. I mean, they either goes, and that normally drifts off to two compositions, either Tank, Vulture, Tank, Vulture, Goliath, or Tank, Vulture, into Science Vessels, finally into Goliath, or or uh, bio, which would mainly consist of Marine Medic Science Vessel with a couple tanks in there. It tends to be how Terran plays most of the time. You don't normally see openings like uh, what you would see a cloaked wraith, unless they're pretty awesome and epic, and they know I'm specifically looking for that. Like, there's just different openers. And again, I'm not bashing on Brood War by any means. I love watching Brood War. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a different oriented game. And I really don't know why I'm talking on StarCraft 2 when it is a Brood War <laughs> D-ranked team league, but it, it it's kind of different. But again... You, I think you tend to see more crazy builds anyway in D rank. Kind of what you would see similar to lower league, any kind of thing, where people will be like, well, I'm going to play for fun. 
Well, I'm not saying these players don't play to get better, but they might play for a more uh, recreational purpose instead of being like, okay, I'm going to become the best freaking player I possibly can by learning every single mechanic instead of trying to be more creative. I think that's another way to look at uh, at D rank in general, uh, where, you, where you're going to see more creative builds coming out. Like for example, that early push where you don't where you don't normally see the higher level or high highest level ICC Cup players or pros do it. Pros tend to do uh, like J Dong and stuff. The one I just posted uh, that was a little more intense. That was a little more pushing. Uh, but I guess high level ICC Cup people is mainly what I'm talking about. As I mainly watch those games, where they tend to be like, okay, I'm not going to deal with any kind of harass or early push. It's just going to be completely on uh, macro. Now, again, there are exceptions, and you could completely disagree with me. I just want to make that point out very clearly. Everything I say in a cast, I try to be like, that's not, that's not the right thing. There are exceptions to the rule every single time. Especially, like, I could be completely wrong by analyzing, and he just wasted three ten. Oh. Four, three. Oh, that might have just lost in the game right there. You do not want to lose tanks, especially where TVT. It looks like it seems like it's developing as where you just whoever has the most amount of tanks will win. Uh, meaning that you're gonna ooh actually get some wraith in here, which he might not be able to deal with right now, especially when they're cloaked. He didn't invest two hundred, I believe. No, he lost scans though. That's the other difference. Uh, he did invest kind of heavily in those scans, and that's maybe another reason why people don't go Cloak Banshee. I mean, ugh. Man, I'm thinking StarCraft 2 oriented right now. Uh, that's maybe another reason why they don't go um, explicitly uh, Cloaked Wraith, because especially in TVT where they'll just get those combat stations up fairly fast anyway. Uh, now, upgrade front for both players. Uh, he will have one um, plus one for his uh, for his mech. He will not, but he will have another expand over uh, Legendary. So... Uh, so we'll have to, I mean, Lightning, excuse me. Legendary is next game. <laughs> and he's a dessert. So, wow, those just kind of went right through the Red Spider Mines. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, if you guys are completely new to Brood War and you're just kind of learning it, um, and you're kind of having me blabber and blabber about stuff, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, now, these Spider Mines uh, are come from the Vultures. Now, they, per they, they mainly do two purposes. Number one, they do a huge amount of DPS, especially against an, an army that was not expecting it, and he will be losing a couple tanks out there. Uh, that's numero uno in uno, numero dos, which is like number two. Is it just gives them map vision? Even if they don't go off, he'll be like, okay, so he's sending an army this way, and if he has good map awareness, he'll be like, okay, the vultures are coming to my base, and got a flank piece, so I should probably put units there, like that kind of thing. Where it, where it would really it kind of matter. If you're coming from StarCraft 2, it would be like it would, it's like the equivalent to whatever you, to your to your Zell Nugget Towers, which would give you mad vision. Um, and this is another thing about casting. I think I might be a little bit different from mainly most Brood War casters, where they may have mainly kind of just kind of st stuck on the Brood War for longer. I'm kind of more of a average Joe kind of guy. Not like a super huge StarCraft buff, and like not saying that they're not talented casters by any means, but I just tend to relate more to the Star. I tend to relate the two games together and try to make uh, like comparisons and contrast them a little bit more, which may provide for a more interesting experience for you guys, may, may not either. So, again, there's that thing, and I might be. I'm, people may just not like me for that. Uh, ooh, so everyone's really down. Uh, he. They should fall. Tanks do a lot of DPS. They do 30. Their shot cannons do 75 damage. That is just that does so much damage. So yeah. So uh, the, if you're if you're a nub, the most important thing is to do. If you're Terran or you're just learning, uh, one basic thing you can learn from this game is Spider Mine placement. Uh, it's very very good. It gives you the map awareness. And if an unexpected army does run into that, they're kind of wrecked. They do 125 per hit. So that's a lot of damage. I, if it if it hits a tank, it's almost a one shot kill. So two, look at that. Con side of these though, if they're right in front of your base for defensive purposes, and for example, I've seen it in uh, TV, uh, I've seen it in both a TVP and TVZ where they'll do a drop over spider mines over a whole siege line. The the, the spider mines will connect to those drop units, and then they'll blow up like five or six tanks, which is very well, and it's kind of dumb for the uh, tower to go that. Um, 
Now, I know it might feel it may, may seem like I just totally just BS my way by saying this, but I do remember now I have seen like two pro um, TVTs before, and one was with Boxer, and it was like a 50 minute game. But I remember it was made, they had a lot of Wraith play, and I, I know I'm just kind of saying, it may seem like that, I'm just saying that right now, but I just honestly generally remember that Wraith play does seem to be more effective, or it seems to be more, uh, there's a lot more Wraith play in TBT than there is in any other matchup, probably. You don't really see Wraith that much, and as they are kind of sucky units, 8 damage per shot, and like air upgrades are pretty expensive. So you don't normally go math race. Um, unless you're going like some awesome harassing build. And he'll be... Is he is he taking that greedy expand? I was like, are you kidding? Like, is he actually going to take that expand? But he won't. He will be taking his own fourth, though. So he'll actually be ahead in the uh, bases if that goes down. But he will have his own army. He kind of just completely out-positioned... Uh, or out-maneuvered, I should say. Uh, what's his name? Uh... Lightning. And now he's going to have to force it on Siege, apparently. But if he moves back... Oh, no. He's going he's gonna to go back for the front. It might, might be a base trade scenario at this point. We'll have to see. Uh, I believe um, he has a more... He's a bigger army. But he's running to a Siege line right here, which is never a good thing. Uh, he will be able to see up the ramp now. But he, there are uh, a couple of Wraiths here just kind of poking away at the tank. Not really doing much, but uh, we're doing quite a few damage. Over here, there's like a huge army. doesn't really have much to deal with. There's four tanks... Uh, and he also has four tanks, so it's pretty even. But he, the other thing is, uh, um, he doesn't have he, he doesn't have wraith breathing down his neck. Uh, that's the other thing. Uh, so yeah, I think um, with that push, it might have just kind of ultimately ended up uh, lightning here. And sadly, I was hoping that he was uh, he was some reflection on the baddest trick for Final Fantasy 13. But I guess that's not the case in this game. He will have uh. Three other tanks, uh, but they're both fairly weak on HP, and they just get shot to death. Will he be moving in here? And they get blown up by the shock cannon. And yeah, th I think that's definitely GG. He doesn't really have much to deal with. He'll finally have a, uh, a cloaked wraith, but he'll. I, I wouldn't be surprised for him to put down a scan. It looks like he doesn't even have a goliath. No, he will. But that, that's kind of a little late, and that's the reason why you get banshees. I don't know. Ugh. When I say banshee, I mean wraith. If I never correct myself, I'm sorry. But... And mineral harassing, yeah, he's not really gonna be. I don't think he's lost too much economic. He's he's he he's though I don't remember. Arya has done so much economic damage to lightning. It's kind of impossible for him to come back if unless he kind of just sits away and leaves for twenty minutes. That's like the only way he probably couldn't. He could probably lose this game right now or come back and win, depending on what player you're talking about. But it looks like he will clean this army up, but, you know, he'll see, like, this, like, whole other mech army kind of pushing down. Uh, upgrades for both players aren't the greatest. Um, but, yeah. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to see. Two race are up now, but uh, there's a GG by late one ing G and uh, there it is. Uh, good, at least he didn't rage quit. Um, now, for Fitz tip of the game, before I completely lose my voice and I need to go grab another chocolate milk, um... So for lightning, um, other than you should adapt and you should tap into your awesome badass lightning, go watch some Final Fantasy 13 videos and you'll be like, feel like a badass because you're representing lightning as the main character from 13. Or 13 too, as there are a couple of, I haven't played it yet, but anyway. I either recommend doing that or actually get better at this game. No, I'm uh, one thing I, do you, one of two things you could do. I don't even put out two out there. Uh, one, if you're going to be doing that expand or that that contain play, uh, make it sure make it so you cut off the, the any kind of base. Like you're you're setting up the contain so as if I can my mouse could change on the mini map here if you can see it. You had a contain around this area over here where that left this whole ramp where they could you know flank and move out, which he was able to do, and he, you didn't see that really at all. Um, until it was really too late where he was able to siege up and, and do that. So you're gonna, if you force them to, if you force by the ramp, get up here, well, the force will be two bases, build a secondary army, kill off their third, and what can they do about it? They have, they have to push in, and if they're not gonna have as much, and you're, you know, taking, aggressively taking expands and being 
cautious about it, you'll be able, you'll be able to come over the top. Uh, that's kind of one, and I don't actually have a second one because uh, it was TVT, and I don't know much much about it. But uh, other than you know, take your expand more earlier, maybe just get a little bit more macro. I didn't really ex specifically see that, so I say work on that one thing I told you. Just work in the better positioning of your tanks. I think you're even up to the point where where you just kind of traded armies. It, it would. It, where he had more defensive um, area, or you could, or the other thing is you could get more wraith out. That's the, that's what the other thing. Get more wraith out to deal with the tanks uh, when they're uh, when they're not guarded by Goliath. Uh, as you as you weren't able to push into the base because he had, because you didn't have the wraith to kill off the four supporting defensive tanks, which is what could have been completely different. Instead of running into a six siege tank line where your army was completely decimated, you could have had a whole army t killing showing as main. So, game could be could have been different, but good game, good TVT regardless. I'll be back shortly once my voice is somewhat recovered. Alright guys, have a great day. And Fitz is out of here, out of your hair, out of everything, out of your YouTube box, etc. And I am going to press the F9 button to end recording over right now. Peace guys.